matrices finally okay so what are matrices is essentially an uh, efficient way to represent linear maps right blah 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 something like that okay so before that let's give a definition so a dimension v to be finite dimensional and an ordered basis is a set of bases equipped with a total order okay so why we want a order relation on this basis well it's because it is to let us know which element comes first which element comes second and so on it is not really meaning that well b1 is larger than b2 i mean this order relation it kind of like um it, it kind of like eliminates redundancy right because b1 b2 if if you're given b1 b2 if you're b1 b3 b2 and so on i mean they're the same set of bases right if they're the same set of bases we just give them an order we just arrange them in order and we just talk about this basis so it's like a in sense of like eliminating redundancy okay so you usually just write b instead of like b with the order so here's the definition so V is finite dimensional over a field F. Well, if you have an ordered basis for V. Now, for X and V, we pick kappa such that you can express a linear combination of them because they're uni uniquely determined because it is a basis, right? Now, the coordinate of X related to B is defined as you just pick those kappas that we arrange them in like a element of Fn, okay? So the coordinate of x related to b is those. And some definitions. So we have vw vector space if, OK, so if dimension v, um, dimension v is equal to n, dimension w is equal to McDonald's m, OK? Then, for T be a linear map, we give in two ordered bases. Now, for T V J, right? V J, we act, we apply T to it. Then you're mapped to the span of this, right? Then you have a uniquely determined alpha I J, right? So V J you have alpha I J, and I is the one that varies from one to m. Now the matrix of T related to D. And C is this matrix, such which is the matrix of A alpha I J, right? So for this, right? So for T V one, alpha one one, alpha two one, alpha M one. This is for what V one, and for V two is alpha one two, alpha two two, alpha N two. Right, then we move on until Vn, right? Alpha n1, alpha n2, alpha, oh, alpha 1n, alpha 2n, alpha mn. So this is the matrix, right? This is the matrix TCD. Now, if w is equal to V, D is equal to C. Then we just write this, we just write it at this notation. It's a square matrix. Okay, some examples. If DC is the standard ordered basis for R3 and R, we define map like this. Now TE1 is equal to 2, TE2 is equal to 1, TE3 is equal to negative 3. So the matrix is 2, 1, negative 3 which is a one times three matrix, right? Just some examples. Okay, here's a new definition. So same setting, blah, 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 TS for two linear maps. Uh, okay, T and R, two linear maps. Then R plus T is equal to R plus T and kappa T is equal to kappa times T in terms of matrices. So this shows that the map that takes the linear map to its matrix, to the matrix, it takes the linear map to matrix, so that it takes T to T is linear, right? It's a linear bijection. 
Okay, so we know that it's already linear, but we want to show that it's bijection, or it's like an isomorphism. So if T V I, S V I, then T plus S V I, and just add them up, right? And it's easy to see that the result holds. So it's it's linear. Right? So for the linearity it's already proven. Linearity is already proven, like and we want to show that this bijection. So this this mapping is a bijection. So for any matrix, we let x1 to be this. Okay, so x1 is um, of a 1, 1, of a 2, 1, 2, of a 1, 3, of a 1, M. Okay, then these scalars alpha W1 plus W2 plus alpha W3 plus, plus W, M. So we take their sign define this to be x1 so just each column right each column so we, we run through all the columns there are n columns right because you have you have m here and then you have n here right? so you run through all the columns so you have n vectors and right these are n vectors they are in what they're in the space w but by theorem 1.18 Right, so if we have n elements, then there exists a unique linear map such that it has the desired output. Right, we proved this last lecture. And right, there exists a unique one such that it has the desired output. Now, with that being said, if we have this, and is from our construction, right, it's easy to see that this matrix is really just alpha ij. So for any matrix, we have a linear map such that this or this mapping, right? This mapping, T, uh, this mapping, this mapping is equal to the given matrix. So only, here we only show that it is surjective, right? But this uniqueness gives you injection, or the uniqueness show that it is injective, right? You can think about it, right? Because it's already surjective, and each output can only be mapped by one element from this space, which means that it is injective, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. And note that the mapping depends only on V and W, not only on it, but it's also also depending on the basis. Okay. All right. So let's we'll just. Go back. Define composition as functions. So if they're linear maps. So V W Y Z are vector spaces over a common field F. And suppose that R is a, like you just read it like the, the settings. Then the composition of S and R is linear. So S of R, S of R, it takes V and take uh takes to Y, Y, right? So it's n what? V, y, right? It's linear. And we also have these uh, properties, five properties. They're really easy to verify, so I just skipped it. So we only show that it is linear. So S of R, a cap of V1 plus V2 is S of, no, we use the fact that R is linear, right? And each of them can view as a one vector, as a single vector. Then we can just bring them out, right? S R V one, S R V two. So kappa of S of R of this, which is kappa of S of R of this one, plus F of R of this. It is linear, because right? we use the fact that R and S are both linear. Now, if we chosen three order bases of three different vector spaces. What is the matrix of its composition, right? Rm, 
the matrix of R is this, and the matrix of S is this. What about the matrix of their composition? Right? So as of R of Vj, so each element Vj, now we're passing through R Vj, it gives this uh, expression, right? It gives this expression. And now we use the fact that S is linear, we bring this in. Now again we use this setting inside again, right? And and from here to here we just rearranging the sum. Okay? We just rearranging the sum. And here we define this whole thing to be equal to ij. Then S of R C D is just the um the uh, matrix of Q I J. Okay. So for here, we define the multiplication of matrices to be the matrix of their combination of its corresponding linear map. So this gives a corollary. Okay. So this is really, really simple. So here's how some, have some examples. So if R is the map that takes the derivative of a polynomial, and S is the function that takes takes this polynomial to this polynomial. Okay, is it look it looks like an antiderivative function, right? But we we have to there's a plus c over there, but we just ignore the plus. I mean plus c or something. Like that. But we just ignore the plus c, right? We just define the map exactly like this. Okay, it doesn't really matter. Right, so there's like an antiderivative thing, right? You can observe that. Well, by our theory of calculus, we know that well derivative and and integration they are uh like inverse operations, right? So in our case here, if we just D and C to be the standard order basis, the matrix of R is this, the matrix of S is this. Like direct you just you just you just we just follow by definition it gives these two it's not really hard now then r of s c gives you the identity matrix which is the identity matrix right it gives like something that is just an identity right so that's kind of surprising right so for here we have a notation so i n is the Diagonal matrix, all the one others are all zero. And zero n is the zero matrix. So here we have a theorem. The theorem I just skipped the proof because it's kind of trivial because well it's just matrix multiplication and it is distributive. It is I mean you can bring the constant in and out. And I M A is equal to A is I N. Just with the identity matrix. It gives you back itself. And the identity map on V is equal to i n identity map the the matrix of identity map is the identity matrix okay for d being any ordered basis right now we let v w be a finite dimensional over f and d c order basis of v and w now we have this equality Okay, now for every x, we express as a linear combination of, I mean, elements from the bases and some scalars, then tx is equal to this. And from here, right, and from here, we have the uh, addition, I mean, even above, right, we have uh, but anyways, we have the addition of matrices is a, is distributive, right? We, we could just distribute them, right? Just distribute them, just distribute them, right? And this is equal to matrix of t times matrix of x, followed by the definition. It's just direct computation. 
And here is finally something that is more interesting. So we let A to be a matrix. We define the left multiplication operator LA. LA. GTA 5. Um, to be a, a member of this by LA x equal to AX for x being an FN. So FX is a column matrix. Right, is a column matrix. So LA of x is equal to matrix multiplication. It gives you another matrix. Right? It gives you another matrix. And first, we show that LA is linear. LA kappa x plus y is equal to A kappa x plus y. Then we can just use the linearity of matrix multiplication. It gives you the result. And also, the mapping that takes A to LA is called a left regular representation. Right, so we're given a matrix, and you map to LA. So you're given a matrix, and you map to what? L F F M or F and I forgot, but it's just right. Right, so it takes a. It is a function that takes a matrix mapped to a function. So here's an exercise. So we take, as I said before, we take this matrix and then we map to a function that takes A to LA. So we have two fact. That first, uh, it is a linear bijection, okay? And for a second, Second is an immediate consequence after we proved the first one, okay? So let's just focus on the fact that this is a bijection. So we already show that. Okay, I only show that it is bijective. Let's just show that it is linear, okay? Let's just show that A is linear. I mean, the, the mapping is... The mapping is linear. Well, it's quite easy, right? Um, so I didn't prove it any. I just I just started to prove it. So if you have kappa A plus B, right? It should give you L of kappa A plus B by definition, right? No, L of kappa A plus B. So L of kappa A plus B of X, it is kappa A plus B, this matrix multiplied by, I mean multiplied by the element X, right? X is itself a, a column matrix, right? Now, here we can just use the linearity property, right? Kappa times ax plus bx which is equal to kappa times lax plus lbx so 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 which means that um any element right we have yeah we have this and then we can have that well what is kappa kappa a plus b they're the same thing right they're the same thing so these two are the same so it is linear okay i think it's kind of simple so i it's too simple that even i forgot to prove it it's just simple to prove we just use the property of matrices right Okay, so now we show that is a bijection. So first we show that it's injective. Now if two matrices are the same, then for any x, we have Lx, Ax through Bx. And Bx is equal to Lbx, so La is equal to Lb. Okay. So their output are the same, if two matrices are the same. Wait. 
Okay. Wait a second. Wait a second. No, 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 no. No, okay. We should go from the reverse direction. Wait. Yeah, if L A equals to L B. Okay, if L A is equals to L B, then for any X and F. I was trolling so hard. F N, I suppose. L equals to AX equals to LBX. LBX is equal to BX. So if AX is equal to BX, then we want to show that we want to show that A is equal to B. Right, so how do we show this? Now we use the assumption that is true for all this. So if we say a of 1, 0, 0 is equal to b times 1, 0, 0, right? So this, so if you just multiply out, 1, 0, 0, 0. So if you multiply this out, mm, I think it is supposed to give you the first column, right? It should be giving you the first column, right? Yeah. And we just perform the computation one times this, zero times this, plus zero times this. Okay, it gives you the first column. So their first column are the same. Same first column. So, in light of that, we just do, then we can argue that, well, 0, 1, 0, 0. So all the way to 0, 0, 0, 1. They're all the same, which means that all their columns are the same. Well, which means that they're the same, right? Which means that they're the same. Okay, so this shows the injection. I mean, it's injective. Right, is the injection function. Okay, so LA is LB, then A is equal to B. Same output gives you same input. Okay. All right. Now we want to show that it is surjective. Now, to show that it is surjective, first we let D and C be standard ordered bases of FN and FN. Okay, and so to show that it is surjective, we want that for any elements in here, we can find a matrix such that this applied to this matrix gives you the function, right? So here, for any linear maps, now we first we give our standard ordered basis, right? For any linear map, we can then associate a matrix, right, with respect to these two ordered bases, and we denote that as A, okay? So we want to show that phi of a is equal to t, then we're done. Right? If we can show this, then we're done. Now, for x in the field, and fn, we can write x, so we can write x as those, as the coordinate of x with respect to d. So why? Because for any x can be written as the scalars x1, e1, X and X can be written as X1, E1, X, N, E, N, right? They're uniquely determined. So X, D is equal to this, right? But if F is already a column matrix, we just write them in terms of this. Then it is automatically equal to its... Is coordinate okay so if that's not clear I will say it again so X is in the field and FN then X is just equal to something like this right right we can just write X as something like this because it is in FN okay so if you are in something like this well what is this what is this thing? 
this is x1, e1, x, and e, n, right? So it is a coordinate with respect to the standard ordered basis, right? So x is equal to this, right? This is a very special setting, right? If we consider the standard ordered basis, you see? Okay. So we use this property so that LAX, this A of X, is equal to A of X, right, by definition. And what is A? A is just this function, right? A this times this, right? Well, this is just equal to this. And this goes to this. We've already proved this, right? Not actually proved it, but it's just computation. Right? It gives you this. But focus on this. Well, D is a standard order basis, so does C. Right? So we can like we can just I mean okay, it's coordinate on C, which means that Tx is equal to Tx one E one Tx M E M. Right? Okay, let's use the standard order basis. Okay, so this we are we're good. But for tx, tx is equal to t one x e one plus dx m e m. We already know this, but this is equal to this because each e one is a column matrix, right? It gives you back the column matrix. So LAX gives you this, TX also gives you this, which means that LA is equal to T, right? So it is surjective, right? Now, then we have our observation is that LADC is equal to A, right? Because LA is equal to T and TDC is equal to A, right? So LADC is equal to A, okay? So the second statement is that if there are standard order bases, then LACD is equal to A, right? As I promised, is an immediate consequence. And T is also linear, so we can just move that to here. Right, so it is. Alright, so this concludes this section.